Another really good scene in that Homeworld comics is at the end when uh, Garrus is caught in that firefight between uh, or among the three Merc groups. Um, and he's pretty much giving up already. Well, not giving up, but he's like, they're going to get to me because he, he only has so much in him left. Uh, you know, in the, that scene in Mass Effect 2 when he, when, you know, before Shepard gets to Garrus and finds out that Archangel is Garrus. The comic shows that scene where he's, he's fighting the mercs and he contacts his father when he feels like that's it. Garrus tries to beat around the bush and he's like, hey dad, you know, I'm, I'm sorry that we haven't talked or something like that and you know things haven't gone well with each with us and and his father's like what are you doing and garris is i think says some like target practice and his father understands immediately that he's in a tight spot right now and he's like okay forget about everything like don't think about anything right now and he's like how many targets do you have or something like that he's like trying to make garris focus and to not give up until those targets are down like he had said in the beginning when he when he was a little kid uh and garris it, it, you know that's when he looks through his scope and sees the n7 and he's like you know what the odds just got better his father's like get this done you know don't give up and when this is done come to palavin and we'll you know sort things out and I thought that was so cool. Uh, and then, you know, he sees Shepard and he's like, yay! After this, obviously in Mass Effect 2, he gets his freaking face shot off by a helicopter or whatever the hell it was, that ship. And um, he gets synthetics. So he, he does have, uh, Jacob says that he does, he was, uh, he did have to get some kind of synthetic in him. I don't know where, but he got shot right here, obviously. Uh, he has that patch throughout Mass Effect 2 after that. But in Mass Effect 3, he doesn't have the patch anymore, obviously, but he does have the big scar. I really love the way he looked like in Mass Effect 3. That was my by far my favorite Garrus. Ooh. Out of the three Garrus from Mass Effect 1, 2, and 3, you could tell that he was he, he was a Turian that has gone through a lot and to, to become who he is. Uh, and I just thought that was super cool, and he just looks awesome. In Mass Effect 1, he's he had the black and blue. In Mass Effect 2, I believe it was still black and blue with a little bit of gray, and then in Mass Effect 3, it was gray and blue. Um, I was really used to seeing Garrus with the black and blue, but I, I after seeing him so much in Mass Effect 3 with the gray and blue, I think, I think he looks really cool with the gray and blue. Bioware has always said that the blue is really what makes Garrus stand out as Garrus out of all the Turians. It's the blue. Um, that represents Garrus. In Mass Effect 3, uh, when when uh, Sh Shepard is pretty much grounded, Garrus during this time really wanted to make the galaxy realize that the Reaper threat was real and that they needed to do something or else everyone was screwed. Uh, he, he pretty much tried to continue what Shepard was doing um, while Shepard was in custody. So Garrus' last hope was his father. So he went to his father, told him everything from the beginning, from Eden Prime, told him about the, the Reapers and everything. And he really, like I said, he thought that, that his father was going to was gonna laugh at him that he wasn't gonna believe him because his father was part of CSEC and CSEC was always you know that 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 freaking weight on Garrus holding him back surprisingly his father believed him left everything went to talk to Primarch Fedorian during that time um Fedorian was a, a good friend of uh Garrus's father but it was hard to convince him so like Garrus says in Mass Effect 3 one of my favorite lines yell loud enough and eventually somebody will come over to see what what all the fuss is about they gave him his own reaper task force Garrus wants to think that this bought Palavin sometime they couldn't stop it but at least they were kind of prepared for it in Mass Effect 3 you don't come in contact with Garrus until you go to uh Palavin's moon Minet um, that's when you, you see Garrus, uh, and for the first time in Mass Effect 3, that was like a big moment for me. I was like, ah! he tells you, you know, that Primarch Fedorian was killed and that now the next in line is Primarch, um, Victus. So, uh, yeah, that's when he helps you get to Victus and yeah, he joins your, your, your squad again in, in that moment. So in Mass Effect 3, you really get to see how, how Garrus has changed, um, especially in his position. In Mass Effect 1, he was like a pawn. He was being used by CSEC all the time, and he couldn't get things done. And then he joined Shepard, 
And now he became like a partner. You know, he, he, he found somebody that wanted to do things the way that he wanted to and to get things done. And then in Mass Effect 2, he was this vigilante and he, he got his, his, uh, his, his place to shine and then fell from it. And he just, he was a wreck. And he tells, he tells Femshep, uh, if you romance him in Mass Effect 2, he tells him, he, he tells her, he tells her, he just wants one thing to go right. And I, I, that always stuck with me because it really shows what Garrus is feeling. He feels like nothing goes right with him. Like things have just been going so bad for him um, from the beginning where it's just like, man, I just can't cut a break and I can't get things done. Like I think he felt, especially without Shepard, without Shepard there, he felt like they took his arms away. Um, and I always loved that relationship between Garrus and Shepard, especially Fem Shep, of course, because I'm like a super supporter of the romance of the Fem Shep and Garrus romance. I'll go into that a little bit later because I have something to say about that. And then in Mass Effect 3, you could see a, an independent Garrus, like a more independent Garrus getting things done um, for others. Uh, he is, he's part of that refugee uh, group on the Citadel and he's getting um, supplies for the Turians and all this. And you're just like, wow, it's, it's a completely different Garrus and not so naive anymore. It's like he's being slapped into the reality of things. And it's kind of like he can't really wish to change the world anymore. It's like you got to just support what's there so that it could survive. I think every character in Mass Effect 3, or most of the characters, you could really see the toll of the war on them. And not just not just Shepard, because Shepard really goes through a lot of emotion in Mass Effect 3. In that refugee scene where he's in, in, in the Citadel, and you could just see, you could hear uh, the Turian telling him how many losses, and Shepard's like, oh my god, I can't believe there's so many losses. And you could just see Garrus is like distraught and hearing all of this. But he's like, you gotta get, you know, you got, we gotta keep fighting. We gotta keep fighting. You could see that he, he's, he's completely like drained also on the Normandy later on when he doesn't know where his, his father, his sister and his mother are. And he, it's, he's just like, oh, I don't know if they're even alive. And he says, you see that part right there, that, that burning that that the the burning uh, area on Palavin, that's where I I grew up on. And then later on, you find out that his his father, his sister, and his mother were able to get away uh, safely. But he, but you could still see that drain in him, where he's just like it's just so much. He's watching his home planet be destroyed, and he can't really do anything f uh, for them you know by being there but he has to stand behind the lines and hope that what he's doing is really making a difference i think there was more of a connection with garris and shepherd in that aspect um as much as all the other characters did too uh, i really liked the connection with garris and shepherd um in mass effect 3 especially if you're a femship uh, and you're in a relationship it's it, i just love that support system that you have with Garrus. While I'm on, on the topic of Garrus's family and his mother, um, in Mass Effect 2, Layer the Shadow Broker, the DLC, we find out that Garrus's mother is sick. She has an illness that's called Corpalis Syndrome, and we find this out in like in the in the dossiers on the Shadow Brokers on the Shadow Broker ship. We see this conversation between him and his sister Salona, um, and I lo I've, I always loved this this aspect that they added to the to the layer of the shadow broker cuz i know some people have missed this that, that cuz they're like what what are you talking about garris's mom where did they mention this um they first mentioned it in layer of the shadow broker and then in the comics um and then in mass effect 3 and you could also see a private message um from garris to uh helos medical institute where they talk about this illness the corp the corpalis syndrome and he has he has been like looking for a cure or some some kind of uh help you know treatment for his mother i'll put that up uh, on here as well uh, most likely at the end so you can see that and then they have of course garris's kill list which i love so much and then of course there's the visor specs which i've always wanted i always wanted to know how his visor works um and exactly what it does for him and on here it shows exactly what 
what it does. Uh, so I will put that up as well for those of you that have missed that. Missed that. But yeah, I, it, it's absolutely touching uh, with his mother and he doesn't want to worry his mom or his sister by telling them that he's fighting freaking reapers and all this stuff. Since he doesn't tell his sister what he's doing, she automatically thinks that that he's off like partying or something like that and and Garrus makes her believe that and it's just like no Garrus why it's just heartbreaking um the way that the the conversation between them here I'll just go ahead and read it hey glad I caught you just about to head to bed late my time where are you come on you know I can't tell you that not a secure channel oh please Garrus you don't have to be all secretive Ilium give it up Saul you're one to talk Still playing at Spectre, even after all these years? How's mom? Last round of treatments didn't go so well. Damn it. We may try an off-world center. Some Salarian doctors have something that might work. It's not covered, though. Of course not. I could pay for the treatments. That's a nice thought. I could really use you here, though. I can't. How much for the first round? Forget it. I can pay. Sure you can. You lose your CSEC job, and what about that contract job you were doing up until recently? Yeah, it ended badly. So don't give me more garbage about how you're going to help. You obviously can't help or won't bother. Damn it, you haven't even bothered to sync up for video chat since you lost the damn job. If you're so ashamed to look me in the eye, then why are we even talking? Go have your fun doing merc work or screwing around or whatever. Just don't act like you care. <laughs> you're right, Saul. I'm so sorry. <laughs> no, I'm sorry. Things are rough with mom. The Salarians are expensive as hell. I wish I could help. I'm going on a trip. Might be away from the relays for a while. Another pleasure cruise? You know me. Send me something nice. I'll be in touch when I can. Oh my god, I'm just like Garrus. Oh no, man. How are you gonna make her think that? She's thinking horrible things about him. She's thinking that he doesn't care. And it's like, Garrus, you gotta, you gotta be straight up. But it's all because he doesn't want to worry them. Because if he told them, this is in Mass Effect 2, if he told them that he was going on the suicide mission and all this stuff and he might not come back and all this thing, it, it would tear up his mother. It would tear her apart and it would tear his sister up uh, with worry. So that's why he did it. And it's just like, oh my god. I just felt so bad for Garrus when I was reading this. After this and seeing him in Mass Effect 3, the way that he was so worried about his family, and especially his mom because she's sick, um, it's just heartbreaking. It was like, oh my god. Like, If you miss this stuff, you miss out. I really think that these little things details are so important to know um, when going into playing the game so that you really get the depth of the emotion in those scenes. Now on to the Garrus romance. The Garrus romance was uh, that was fan tailored. Uh, Bioware didn't have Garrus as a romance in mind. After seeing so many fans supporting that romance after Mass Effect 1, uh, Bioware made it happen so I'm so glad that they did and, and it, I, I don't know why I'm just I just love that romance so much when it's so weird but it's just I love the character so much that I just it's like I forget that he's this dinosaur looking thing even then he looks absolutely awesome and his voice and everything it's just everything him as a character it, he just he's just perfect <laughs> the the romance in mass effect 2 as much as i liked it i wanted more made clear um what i mean by that is that that romance was made to seem as if it wasn't a romance as if it was more of a letting off steam type of thing like you know we're both friends that's you know they they made it seem they, they kind of left it open in the air where it's like wait does garris feel anything for for shepherd or is this just like a like a you know let's just get together and and blow off some steam type of thing or you know they may, they kind of left it all up in the air when you're talking to to kasumi kasumi says that something like you know she's always known that garris has had a crush on you or whatever but even then it's like i understand why they did that because garris never was a was never attracted to humans why would he even find Shepard physically attractive if it just 
you know, he's a Turian and Shepard's a human. I think he was, it was more of like an attraction of personality, of brains, of, uh, you know, of, of a person, not so much of physically. I think the physical aspect of their relation didn't, didn't come until Mass Effect 3. But when I was playing Mass Effect 2, I wanted more. I was like, no, I want it. I don't want it to be open in the air like that. Like I want, I want to know for sure that Garrus um, really feels something for Shepard. But of course they went more into it in Mass Effect 3, uh, which, which I, I really love the relationship that Garrus has with Shepard in Mass Effect 3, especially in the Citadel DLC, which I won't go into because I am in the process of recording my reactions to uh, my FemShep playthrough of the Citadel DLC. So you guys will see that um, very, very soon. I'm almost done with that. It's not a full Let's Play. It's just reactions to certain scenes, m mostly the party in Leviathan. If you're in a romance with Garrus, when Shepard comes out of the sea after his, uh, his or her uh, encounter with Leviathan, and um, if you have Garrus on your team, Garrus and whoever you're with sees you come out of the sea and there's two brutes fighting each other, uh, or the two brutes are like fighting, they're not fighting each other yet, I believe, and Shepard just comes out of the mech and like falls down, and Garrus, you can just see how worried he is. He's like, oh my god, and he just runs to you, and then the brutes start fighting each other and puts you on the transport, and he he looks so worried you could hear how worried he is i don't think i've ever heard garris that worried where he's like she's not breathing or something like that i i was like i was like oh my god i love that that, that detail that brandon keener and that that bioware put that to show that concern um of garris uh especially if you're in a romance with with shepherd um listen to that scene it's just it's such a small little detail but it's i don't think i've ever seen or heard garris that concerned that worried and it's just oh my god i loved it i was like ah and then of course oh, the scene in the extended cut man so many people have bashed on the extended cut that scene where the normandy comes and picks you up or picks your party members up everyone's like why didn't freaking um uh, freaking harbinger shoot the 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 normandy down and who knows what and i'm just like are you freaking kidding me man that scene was i love that scene especially in, especially with garris oh my god i don't care if it didn't make sense man I don't care. I make sense out of it in my own head. I make sense out of it. I loved the scene between Garrus and Shepard, that goodbye. And he and she says, I love you. And he says, I love you. And I'm like, <sighs> and the way he says it, it's just like, oh my man, dude. Oh my freaking God, man. Freaking waterfall. Brandon Keener brings so much life to Garrus. That guy is such a great voice actor. He has made Garrus iconic. That's one of the reasons why people love him so much. Garrus is his voice. It's so recognizable. It's so perfect. Brandon Keener, I'm not lying to you. He could read me the phone book and I would ask him to do it again. I do Read me that one more time, please. And the the most amazing thing is that um, as much as they change his voice to make it sound like a Turian, he talks like that. Like he, he sounds pretty much exactly like Garrus. So when the very few times that he has um, shown up in occasions where they interview him, there's only been one when Mass Effect 3 came out. The midnight release, um, at GameStop, he he stopped by, I think it was somewhere in LA, I can't remember where. That was the first time, the first and only time I've ever seen an interview with Brandon Keener about Garrus. He's, he's like talking to them and it sounds like Garrus and I'm like, oh, I would have freaking died. I seriously would have like screamed my lungs out and then died. <laughs> if you guys haven't seen that, uh, you should. 
it's such a good and some people are so mean and they're like man Brandon Keener looks like he's drugged and this and that and I'm like man you guys are freaking stupid if you don't know how Brandon Keener is he, he you might think why is he acting like kind of weird or like so kind of nervy he's a very shy guy He's very shy. That's why he doesn't do interviews. And it's it's like, oh my god. Like, I just want to freaking uh, grapple onto his leg and just stay there. That's why people, when they're like, oh, interview Brandon Keener. There's no way. There's no way that that would happen. I've tried it, and it's just, it's not going to happen. Unfortunately, if it did, I, prob I probably wouldn't even get through the whole interview. Are you kidding me? <laughs> so when he does these these types of interviews he's very nervous you could tell that he's very nervous you could see him sweating because of how nervous he is and I'm just like oh and you really have to know this side about Brandon Keener to understand um why he doesn't do all these these interviews but he's very he's very cool with his fans like he's very appreciative um and all that it's not like he's 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 too proud or anything it's not like that he's he's a very cool guy but um he's 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 shy he 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 doesn't like the limelight he doesn't like the attention um or it makes the, him feel nervous the attention but i have i have posted some of my videos on garris like the valentine's video my, my garris valentine's video on his uh, facebook page and the the parody the song the be my turian tonight song on his page and i think the my boyfriend um is a jerk video as well on his page and he's liked them all which was super awesome to me i was like ah. that means he, he watched it so so yeah he's really cool with his fans but um it's hard to get him uh to participate in fan type of things and you know where he would show up for something unfortunately or probably fortunately because he would probably be eaten alive <laughs> by all the garris fangirls <laughs> when it comes to the garris and tally relationship i'm very um i guess territorial when it comes to garris i want um, my Garrus to be with my shepherd. Th that scene um, with Tally and Garrus, uh, when you find out that they're in a relationship in Mass Effect 3, uh, if you're a male shepherd, or if you don't uh, romance uh, Garrus, I thought I, th I got a kick out of that. Like, I, I was laughing. I was like, oh my god. I really liked the, the conversations that they had um garris and tally uh in in the when you when you hear them talking to each other uh on the calm i i really like those i i love the way that tally um talks to garris i love how she's like you know i i am only using you for your body and he's like you're so mean and i'm okay with that <laughs> if you haven't heard those lines i actually have those lines on my channel i did a lip syncing scene with with those all the whole the whole scene until the r romance with Tally and Garrus so I'll link that here so you guys could check that out but at the same time I can't see Garrus with somebody else like I want to see him only with my femship or me so yeah I think that's pretty much it if I missed anything um there's so much there's so much on Garrus I have so many notes so if I missed anything, I'll add it at the end of the video. But I think that's pretty much what I wanted to talk about. I mean, a, lo a lot of you are huge Mass Effect fans. So I'm pretty sure you know um, about Garrus. Uh, you know what happened in the games with Garrus. So this was pretty much just to, uh, to talk about what I think about Garrus and what I think about what they made Garrus go through and all that and how I interpret uh, Garrus and all that. So hopefully you guys found that interesting. So thank you so much for watching. Remember, I'm going to put the, the dossiers, uh, right after I stop talking. So stay, uh, so stick around for that and anything that I might've missed while I go through my notes again. So yeah, enjoy. And I'll talk to you guys later. <laughs>